Before I get this video started, if you guys want a whole playlist on different shooting tips and tricks from Agent Zero himself, all right? I'm gonna leave a link in the description. It comes out with literally everything I learned about 2K and how to consistently dominate when it comes to shooting. All that stuff is in the description. You guys can run through all the videos if you want. This is one of those long-awaited videos that I very rarely ever do. Man, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to drop a like, subscribe. This video, I'm releasing my main four jump shots. I have four jump shots for different latency situations. These jump shots is not just a regular jump shot. It's not a regular YouTube video. These jump shots are carefully picked and chosen. Over the course of months, I've dealt with high latency, low latency, anything in between, and I've had to find ways to adjust as B Fresh is. What's she, what's she doing in my mic court, bro? B Fresh, who invited you here? Mm. I, I've reached a critical point, okay? And I'm, I'm being so serious when I say this. If Mike Wang messes around and patches any of these jump shots, I quit playing 2K. Y'all might think I'm playing. I am so ready to quit if these jump shots get patched. I don't know if you heard or not, Mike Wang and, and the devs have said in the past that when they find out a jump shot is quote unquote hitting too frequently, they go ahead and patch it low key without saying nothing. They talked about it in an article. On top of the fact that anybody that's been playing the game, you can't be lights out for a whole month and then all of a sudden your jump shot is broken. So it happens. So just know if you're watching this five, six months down the road that there's a potential it might've gotten hit. I'm, I'm so serious I'm gonna quit if they do that. I, it took me so long to come up with these jump shots. I'm not doing it again. It takes so much time. And since there's no real way to practice with latency, I have to hop in games and try it. I, I sacrificed my pro-am record. I sacrificed all my time to find these specific jump shots. This is not a game to me, this is an art. To find jump shots is an art. There's a reason I could do it so successfully. Not anybody can find an A1 jump shot. I got a couple I'm gonna show you here today. So strap up, sit back, kick your feet up actually, all right? Get some popcorn or get some Evian water if necessary. And let's get into jump shot number one. All right, I'm on my sharpshooter now. My PS4 sounds like a jet engine. I've been playing so much PC, honestly, it feels weird to have a controller in my hand. All right, the first jump shot is base nine, a very popular base mixed with Kyrie as the release one and Kyrie as the release two. This jump shot right here fits all the qualifications for an A1 jump shot. Base 9 is one of the three fastest bases in the game, so your shot gets up quick. Only downfall is it does not work on latency. So for whatever reason, if you're an international player or servers are bugging that day and the button delay is a lot higher, this jump shot will brick. It has to be a low latency situation. If ever it's low latency and I get a chance to use this jump shot, you don't leave me open. No matter where I am on the court, no matter what archetype I have, because the release is so green money that it's gonna hit regardless. This for me is a prime release. I don't think I've ever tried it on the park. You guys can give it a try. Honestly, I think it's gonna hit in the park too, but that's just me extrapolating based on the current information I have in my brain. This right here is gonna be your favorite jump shot if you rarely have to deal with latency. If that's you, oh, oh, feast. I know a couple guys that use this jump shot. Of course, just like any base nine, the second you get to the pinnacle and he pushes forward, let go of the ball, all right? Base nine is a pretty easy one to release. If you can't consistently green on this with any build, I do it with my tall slasher, I do it with my sharpshooter, it's deadly regardless. This second jump shot is base 11 with Kyrie as a release one and Kyrie as a release two. You, you see a trend? I really mess with Kyrie. Kyrie is the perfect release. Depending on the base you mesh it with, guarantees releases, right? So anytime the latency jumps for me, and for whatever reason it's high that day, right? Whether it's I'm streaming or I'm not streaming or the service is bugging or whatever the reason is, I switch it to base 11 with Kyrie. And when I tell you this shot is money, I uploaded a video about a week ago and I was playing uh, uh, against Tyreek in a game. And I was, y'all, yeah, you know me. I shoot from half court on the park. This jump shot not only can ball on the park, but it can also ball on the pro end. I've never seen a versatile jump shot like this one. It works in high latency, you can hit in low latency, but if you ever get in the middle, where you're not low, but you're not super high, this jump shot is a miracle worker. I'm telling you off rip. This is the best park jump shot you will ever use in your life. Now, like every base 11 release, it's almost like a momentum based release. Like he floats forward and he pushes it up. I don't really know how to explain the cue. Usually when I shoot with jump shots, if you guys follow my channel, you know, I look for specific cues to know when to release the ball every single time 
at the exact same spot to make it very easy for myself to continuously get greens. Base 11 is one of the fastest jump shots as well. So not only do you get speed, but you get consistency and you get accuracy and it dominates on the park and it dominates on Pro-Am. On the park, it works high, low latency. Pro-Am, I prefer to use my base nine on low latency. The second it jumps, I switch to this release and I'm banging. Yeah, so those videos you see me shoot from half court on the park, this is the jump shot I'm using. It's a deadly release. I actually made a video talking about release number three in the past, and I still do use it occasionally, but only for my guard. So it's base eight with Kevin Durant as a release one and Kevin Durant as a release two. If you don't know, Kevin Durant along with Larry Bird and a few other releases are accelerators. So if you pair it with a base, it actually speeds up the overall jump shot. So not only is base eight, I think it's the the second or the third fastest base in the game, you speed it up with Kevin Durant. It's a super, super fast release. I don't really know the cue for this one. If you ever use the Kevin Durant release, he flicks it back and then goes forward. So the second he finishes that back motion, I usually release the ball. The cue for it is challenging, but if you can get it down and you've shot with base eight before, and you're a guard. This doesn't really hit with my tall slasher, but with my Pierce Sharpshooter, this was the main jump shot I used. This for me was a Pro-Am jump shot. I actually have not tried it on the park. So if you're more of a Pro-Am player and you're a guard, you're gonna wanna try this one out. You may have noticed the trend. Jump shot number four is LaMarcus Aldridge base. Kyrie release one, Kyrie release two. I've tried everything under the blue moon. I've tried every single base in the game and I've paired them with hundreds and hundreds of different types of releases, different release ones and release twos, release this, release that. And if you guys remember in 2K17, I, I, I came out with the gem. I told everybody, use Magic Johnson as your release two and blend it 20% and it's gonna make shooting green so easy on the park. I changed the game, all right? So when 2K18 came out, they made sure to change up Magic Johnson's release it does not work the same this year, of course, because I found a way to hack and dominate in 2K17. When I tell you Kyrie Irving is that same thing, Kyrie Irving is the perfect buffer because when you're playing offline my career, this jump shot's probably not gonna hit. But because Kyrie Irving has a Q and then a buffer that leads you to the green window, it makes it so easy to consistently hit those shots. So just so you guys know, when I'm talking about a Q, do you guys watch the channel enough, you know I rarely ever look at the shot meter. I only ever use it as reference after I've shot the ball. I always look at my player when I'm shooting. And so when I see the player, for example, there's some jump shots where he kicks his feet together. That's my cue. The second he does it, I release the square button. Or some jump shots where there's a motion, like for Stephen Curry, the second he's about to flick his wrist like this, you know to release the ball. With Kevin Durant, of course, there's a backward motion, a forward motion. Kobe has the same type of release. And so with each base and release and pairing you do, there's different types of cues. And this one right here is for high latency situations. There's base nine, there's base 11. And if you ever get so high that base 11 stops working, for example, on high latency days where the 2K servers are bugging and when I'm streaming, I hit this new echelon of latency where none of my jump shots work. And so I needed to find a fix and I was trying out countless bases and I landed on Aldridge and I decided let's try it with the Kyrie Irving base. Well, what do you know, agent? you found another gem. Now Aldridge is actually really similar to base 11 in a lot of ways. It's slower than base 11 and base nine, but it's a fairly fast jump shot relative to most in the game. And on top of that, it helps account for the added latency. This is for me was a prime jump shot. I never tried this on the park. This also works really good for big men. If you're a big man, this is your jump shot right here. So guys, this is the situation. Of all these jump shots, the base 11 one for me is easily my favorite. It's so goddamn versatile. Whether I'm on the park or the prime, whether I'm a sharp or a slasher, no matter the case or the situation, I can find a way to dominate with this base. The thing is, is like you can have the perfect release on 2K, but if you don't have the correct jump shot, then no matter what the situation or how well you're releasing the ball, you're gonna continue to shoot all whites. So if you wanna convert those all whites into greens, you have to focus on creating a piece of art. That's what these jump shots are to me. It's like my Mona Lisa. It's like I work so hard to do this one thing and I have to do it by playing online against real people. So a lot of these Pro-Am jump shots, I develop playing against comp. And that's risky, of course, because if it doesn't work, I shot like three for six that game and my team's not gonna let me live it down. There's no point in practicing these on your my court because the my court doesn't have latency, there's no possible way to adjust. I've been trying to tell 2K forever, 
There's there should be a way to add latency onto the onto the my court so that you can practice in real game setting. Now, there's a lot of small things that end up making a really big difference about these jump shots that you should definitely pay attention to. A main one of these, and the reason I like the base 11 one so much, it goes with all of them, is their limitless range potential. There's no bounds. If you release it properly, there is no possible way you miss. You see me shoot consistently from half court. I did it last 2K and I do it this 2K. And there's only a handful of people that can hop on the game and do it consistently. So you have the proper jump shot, but then you have to work on the timing. The jump shot, you use any jump shot. These jump shots, regardless of which jump shot I try, the first game is probably not gonna work out. Second game it won't, third game it won't. Do different cues. Did this cue work, this cue work? Maybe if I release it when the elbow does this. Maybe if I release it when the ball reaches his forehead. Maybe if I release it when he's ready to flick his wrist, right? So you find the proper cue and you find a way to dominate. With base 11, for me, it's super simple because it's kind of like a momentum-based shot. So the second you see he's reaching his pinnacle, his peak, I let go of the ball. So I just look at the movement of the player. I have the shot meter to let me know after I've shot the shot, how well I've shot the shot. But when I'm playing these games, I'm not looking at the shot meter. I'm focusing on my player, of course, my surroundings as well, to make sure that the shot I'm taking is about to be a green. Especially if you're a sharpshooter, there's no real reason you should be missing greens. In fact, if you can spread the floor and shoot distances, all the way out here on the park, you're gonna be a deadly shooter. I'm, yo, I, I'm so serious when I say this, y'all. I'm so serious. If these jump shots get patched, I am done. <laughs> not looking for more jump shots, not looking for shit. I'm just sick and tired of looking for jump shots. I finally found a series of jump shots, regardless of the BS the 2K service put me through in terms of latency, all right? One day it's high, one day it's low, one day it's this, one day it's that. I have a gigabyte download, 2K. I have a gigabyte. I have a $1,000 monitor, right? I have a PS4 Pro. I have the dream setup, and I'm still dealing with these issues. So if I have to once again go out of my way to spend time quitting Pro-Am games, you wanna see how much Pro-Am games I've quit? Look at, look at all the losses I've taken on Pro-Am, on walk-on. I, I just go in them for a quarter. If it doesn't work, I close out. If it doesn't work, I close out. And I kept doing that over and over and over again because it was the only real way to test a jump shot. But a lot of these tests happen on the walk-on. I tried out a lot of the popular bases, a lot of unpopular bases, just new stuff to see what worked. If you guys remember the start of the year, basically it was, it was young agent who tried to go out there and tell you guys D'Angelo Russell had the biggest green window. Everyone was like, ah, oh, it's kind of slow agent, I'm not really sure. And then next thing you know, 2K Lab comes out with their studies and they say, yeah, D'Angelo at the time had the biggest green window and then patch four hit, everything changed, boom, boom, boom. I just, I have a knack of coming up with jump shots with massive green windows. This is it. If you can't hit with one of these jump shots, it's your timing. You need to work on consistently releasing the ball at the same time, every single time. So find a cue and then make it work for you. The problem is sometimes if you consistently shoot all whites, it might not be you, it might be the jump shot. But in these situations, I'm telling you, these jump shots have been tested thoroughly. All right, I've played all kinds of comp games, all types of park games with a handful of these jump shots. Just, you guys are welcome, all right? You guys are welcome, all right? I'm risking these jump shots for the sake of the community. I'm tired of people asking me for jump shots, man. Like, in, in my opinion, you should probably have a jump shot by now, but there's a handful of people that don't, all right? And so this video is for those people, all right? I kept these a secret for a while because at the launch of the game, I released a bunch of jump shots and they all got packed. I played the game enough to learn the jump shots that do really well. And so to take that away from me is crazy. And it's my, if I choose to share it with people and other people start to shoot really well, then you shouldn't start penalizing everybody, all right? That's just the way the game was built. Okay, you can't penalize everybody who's a good shooter just because they're a good shooter. I'm gonna leave it on that. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.